In this world, there are three types of concept cars. There's, hey, look at this cool thing that has no relation to reality. Then there's the second type, which is, hey, look at this cool thing that may come to life somewhat close to this design. And then there's this, something that is a lovely carrying case for future propulsion technology. Okay, so there's a hell of a lot of moving parts there. What exactly do I mean? Well, let's go back 53 years in history to this, the Mercedes C111, which was a concept car that really was a test bed for propulsion technologies back in the day. No, not electric, rather rotary engines. Yes, it's not a Mazda. And then diesel engines. They made 16 of these cars. They broke speed records for a diesel powered car. Then they put it in this lovely carrying case. And you look at this, it's not a Mercedes Benz that you saw in the 70s, but think about this. This car, this design premiered 13 years after they sunsetted the original Goaling. There's even details in here like the Hound's tooth seats, as well as the Becker radio, which was a factory option for cars back in the day. And that brings us to not sunny California, specifically Carlsbad, California, at Mercedes-Benz Design Studio. Yes, most OEMs have design studios in Southern California, and this, the Vision, 111, not the C111. And the difference is, this is a concept car for today that picks up in the different vision concept cars that have come out of this studio. But here, the relation is really not just the name. The relation is, this is a test bed for future propulsion technologies. No, sadly, there are no rotary engines underneath here. I don't think there will be, although you can leave some comments below to ask them to do that. So what Gordon and the design team at Mercedes have done here, they've reinterpreted the proportions of the original C111. But think about this. This is an electric propulsion system. So like current production electric cars, you can do more with the packaging. And this is not just the whole thing about the longer wheelbase. You can change the surfacing of the vehicle. So that, I wouldn't call that's so much a one bow design, but at least it had that almost soapbox derby look to it. This has the one bow design, but far more attractive than current Mercedes EQ. They've even gotten to the point where they've taken the fenders and it's almost like a cartoon interpretation over the large wheels. Granted, something like this wouldn't come into production. So at this point, we have to put aside the concept of the exterior and focus on the concept of the interior. And here there's a number of moving parts. The first thing you notice is the reinterpretation of the gull wing door. This one significantly longer that accentuates the longer wheelbase of this and electric propulsion system. But then when we look inside, the first thing we notice is, shall we say a rather gaudy interior. Uh, they were going for this whole like 70s uh, Buck Rogers era interpretation. I personally don't like it. I would much prefer the hound's tooth that we see in the C111. But then we look a little bit further and we notice the instrument panel. Now you and I over the past couple of years when it comes to Mercedes EQ, even the S-Class, we've had some problems with those screens because it's just screens. There's no toggle switches, there's no knobs. Granted, the system works, it's much better than the Volkswagen, but there's just something missing. All it needs is like three or four knobs to make it work and be safe as a vehicle that moves down the road. Well, apparently somebody has been listening to us because this is an interpretation of a future version of a Mercedes-Benz OS that involves knobs, toggle switches that works in conjunction with a completely newly developed OS that will become reality in as early as 2025 in the future A-Class. They're calling that the MMA platform. Now this is where we get to a fascinating level of this being a carrying case of future technologies, not just propulsion systems. So what Mercedes-Benz is doing here, they're going down to the root level of the problem. It's not just trying to reinvent the UX or coming up with their own UX. They're going to the point of sourcing their own wafers. Where are they getting minerals for the batteries? We're gonna talk more about that with Marcus Schaefer who runs all the R&D as well as Philip, who runs R&D in the US, but that will be in a future episode. Now we have to get to the incredibly cool part here. So if we remember our C111 history correctly, that was a test bed for propulsion technology circa 1970. This is exactly the same thing, but propulsion technologies circa, I would say 2025 to 2030. What do I mean by that? Well, let's start here 
This is an electric motor that you would see in an AMG EQE SUV like I'm driving today. This one puts out about 250 kilowatts. Look at the size. You can imagine the weight of something like this. You can imagine trying to package this, say one of them or two of them together, that could provide a bit of a challenge. Now let's say for the sake of discussion, you want to improve a number of things in the vehicle. You want to improve the efficiency. You want to improve the weight. You want to improve the driving dynamics. How would you do that? Well, you got to make that smaller. The best way to do that is to turn it into somewhat of a pancake. Enter Yasa. And this is where we get into the game changer that this whole thing is. Really the project is to showcase this motor. And going back a little bit on Yasa. So Tim, who was a PhD candidate at Oxford, he came up with this concept at school, and this is what got him through Oxford. Then this was lifted out of Oxford when he was in like his 20s. Now he still looks like he's in his 20s. And the guy has commercialized this company and has turned it into a supplier to companies like Ferrari, Lamborghini, Mercedes. What you're looking at here is actually not the motor from that car. You are looking at the motor from a Ferrari 296, which is in commercial production with this motor here. And what they've done is they've taken that size motor and turned it into what I could best describe as a pancake. And the idea is they're getting as much or if not more power out of it. So I don't want to get too deep in the weeds here. I'd rather let Tim describe this. But think of this as like what we see with the wet clutches. He keeps this wet here by using some of the plumbing from outside the motor to keep the heat low to make the engine more efficient. It is a fascinating technology that turns into this. And then we get into the real piece de resistance. This, the componentry inside, weighs only 12 kilograms. As a basis of comparison, the componentry in this thing over here weighs almost 50 kilograms. Now here's the real genius of everything we discussed today. Yeah, we could put a motor this size in the center, rear, or front, or both of a vehicle, but here we get to envision something different. This specific application, they've taken these Yasa, what I'm calling pancake motors, there's two of them in the rear of the vehicle, so think how much smaller that is that changes the packaging. But let's extrapolate a little bit here. Look at the size of the wheels here. Look at the size of that motor. Perhaps we could take those motors and put them out at the wheel. That would give us a couple of benefits. Yeah, we're gonna have the low weight, we get that, whether we put the motor here or here, but by putting it out to the wheel, that's unsprung weight, which absolutely transforms the concept of a performance car. Now that's what we get, I would say, to the wish list here. Uh, while I was here shooting this car, I also shot an interview with the chief designer of Mercedes, Gordon, and he intimated that this is more than a concept car. Obviously, these motors are more than concepts because they're in production today with Ferrari, Lamborghini, and other OEMs. However, Mercedes, they've gone headlong into this technology because they've acquired the company Lock, Stock, and Barrel. So this is a Mercedes technology. So what they've intimated, or at least Gordon has intimated, didn't confirm, that something like this, meaning above a GT, that would be this shape of car with this propulsion system, meaning these size motors, will come into production, or he says may come into production, after 2025. Now in terms of a pedantic wish list here, the houndstooth that we talked about in there, can we have that in here? That's the only thing I would really change about the design of this vehicle, because after all, they're giving us knobs and toggle switches. Uh, but I am just one man, and this is the point of the episode, that I turn around to you guys to a pine in the comments below, or via our social media, Moto Man TV All Word, Moto Man TV All Word, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And if you got value out of this episode, I would greatly appreciate you sharing them with all your friends on your socials, and do all the YouTube things. Subscribe, notifications, and the like button. Until I see you in the next episode, Bis später.